Okay. You just choke a little bit. I don't know what to do with my face. I've been watching myself during cold opens. <laughs> and I'm like this. <laughs> I said, this is what I do when you're doing the closing where I'm like. Oh, that. Yeah, you're going to just goof off. Welcome back, Marketing Mirrors of the World. It's time for another episode of Ham Ya. And today, we want to talk about the sixth gear. I'm told that's what a gear shift sounds like in a car. I don't drive stick. But we want to talk about the sixth gear, which is basically, this is a, a wisdom bestowed upon us by our dear friend, Sarah Peck. But the sixth gear is basically the gear where you are firing on all cylinders in your business and in your life. When we think about the sixth gear, this is often where we fall into hustle culture, right? That we should be pushing at all times. We should be going, going, going. If you're not trying and giving 150,000% at all the time, are you even a person versus the reality that you can't always stay there? And I think it's such a learning experience for business owners to discover both their sixth gear and when they have to shift out of it and into something else for their own health and sanity. We have a lot to talk about today, but before we do, Margo, talk to me about your sixth gear. Okay, I love this question because it wasn't something I really understood until Alt MBA because you are given an unreasonable amount of work to do in a time where it's not physically possible to yeah. complete and you sort of learn what your limits are and you learn how to stretch, but it's unsustainable. And so seeing that you have that capability to produce, but then you need a recovery period. Like this yeah. is just part of the cycles. It's like sprints versus marathons. So like you can sprint and get into that sixth gear and like really put everything in, or you can run a marathon. Mm -hmm. And if you start out sprinting, you're so fucked. Like you are never going to finish the end yeah. of the marathon. Yeah. Like you've got to pace yourself. And so I think what I've learned about like sustaining in this game is that it's actually a series of sprints. Yeah. And it's really a question of, self-understanding and awareness to know when you're sprinting for the wrong reasons and burning yourself out yeah and when you need a genuine break versus yeah. when you're slacking off when it's resistance whether you could mm -hmm. actually go harder because that's the confusion in this conversation yeah. people are rallying against hustle culture which is totally fair i have been yeah. that person i am we have a whole person. episode about but it, it would yeah. be amazing really <laughs> yeah. it but then we've overcorrected where people yeah. are like well, I did my one hour of work today. Why am I not seeing results? So y'all, I mean, I mean, I don't, I really, come on, but, and episode, go on. Yeah, and, and scene. So first of all, I love the sprint metaphor because actually if you think about sprinting, you know, you're running at top speed. Yeah. Surely that should be the most efficient mode of transportation, right? Like how fast do you want to go? As fast as possible. Perfect. Surely you will also get results as quickly as possible. Yeah. And then you pass away and you get to, Heaven's Gate and St. Peter's like, it yeah, shouldn't have watched so many Gary Vee episodes. <laughs> Sorry, well, we know Gary Vee is reformed, so we do want to clarify it's not so much unadulterated Gary Vee hustle hate on the show any longer. But I love that you raised that point too, Margo, of having this divide between like the hustle culture folks who are like 150,000% or what the hell are you doing? And the other folks now who are like, fuck hustle culture, like work as little as humanly possible in order to get great results. And to be fair, I think that there's a lot to be said for thinking about schedule. I do this a lot with my clients, thinking, working smarter, not harder, right? Getting more efficient with your time, being more thoughtful about where you're pouring your energy and how often you're working every day and understanding that not every yeah. day can be a 12, 14, 16 hour day. That's important. But also where I personally got stuck because everything is about me <laughs> and I require a lot of external validation in order to survive. But a lot of the issue with me was that I got embarrassed by the anti-hustle, like looking at the and thinking about the anti-hustle folks when I felt like I was working too hard in public. Yeah. Like people would see me and like, oh no, she's trying. You know, you have the cool kids who are kind of sitting down and being like, eh, I didn't really study for the test. And I'm like, I was up till three in the morning. I'm still going to get a worse grade because I'm just not great. <laughs> that's, a mean, that's a mean thing. Um, but it, it feels like very that energy. But in reality, it's always going to be both. Just because, first of all, as you say, in the Alt-MBA experience, or you have to figure out how much you can take on. You have to figure out how much is too much for you. And unfortunately, you're not going to get there until all of a sudden there's too much on your plate and you're like, this plate, it's too full. 
And then you start taking things off and you learn to adjust and you learn to notice when there's yes. too much on your plate and you don't just look down and be like, well, it's all here. I might as yes. well just eat it. It's so important to know what your sixth gear is and how hard you can go. But it's also important to know where your resting point is. I had a colleague call them canaries, right? Like canaries yeah. in the coal mines. Like yes. what are the signs for you when you are going too hard and you spent too long in yes. that sixth gear? For me, I can name them right now. I leave my keys in my apartment door. Not a great idea in Brooklyn. Um, my mouth gets really dry for like a week at a time. And no yeah. matter how much water I drink, and I'm just like, I've got this terrible cotton. Now. Yeah. I find myself waking up in the middle of the night. And that's when I know like, okay, I yeah. have to do something. I have to get stuff, stuff off my calendar. I have to get stuff off my plate. I have to rethink how I'm doing this. But that sixth gear, do I still spend time there? Absolutely. My friend Meryl put it really well. Like I don't love the hustle, but sometimes if I do hustle, it's so I can fail forward fast to get where I want to go. That's exactly what I was going to say. So I was frustrated. And I was talking to our mutual friend, Michelle Warner, yeah. who <laughs> likes to fancy herself my depression era sage because she has that like work ethic of yeah. a nine-year-old. Yeah. And yeah. she's so great. I really didn't want to do something. And it was a project I like just wasn't aligned with anymore. And she was yeah. like, you got to honor your commitments. And some days you just got to truck through the muck. And, yeah. and I realized that that actually really was the message I needed. Like yeah. I want it and we push through gets this negative connotation because people like us take it to the nth degree. Like I've been pushing through my entire life and it led me to some very unhealthy places. Yeah. But then there are moments where you do have to push through resistance and you have to push through the fact that it's unpleasant. And I think people don't realize that part of hard work and part of achievement and part of hitting your goals is it's unpleasant. Like yeah. it's actually yeah. unpleasant. So it's not that it's going to feel great all the time. I'm not on cloud nine writing. And if I hear someone that is on cloud nine writing, I'm like, they're not writing. They're trying to sell you something. <laughs> <laughs> they're reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's true. Like there's no writer in their right mind who yeah. is actually going to sit here and tell you it's a pleasant experience. Pretty much every honest writer will be like, it fucking sucks. Yeah. It's fun in the beginning. You're inspired and then you kill your darling. And then yeah. you're like, oh, what did I do? And you're like face to face with your inadequacies. And then you come out of it through sheer hard work and it's exactly. good. But the point is, I think we're confused about what the cycle looks like because we're sold this like, it's quick, it's easy. If you're really mm -hmm. meant to do it, it'll feel pleasant. And so I think we're confused about what healthy and unhealthy is and what hard work actually looks like. And one of my dad's friends likes to say, well, it's called hard work, not because it's fun and easy. And I like that it's, it is hard, but there, there's a reward in it. Yeah. I think a good metaphor is the gym because I hate the gym and I never want to go, but never in my life have I felt worse after work. Yeah. Yep. Ever. And so I think the same is true about work. And so this conflation of like your passion with your work is really confusing. And so I want to draw a line for people that could be useful and that is health. So I really yeah. liked what Hillary said about the like kind of knowing her signs and asking you to get familiar with your signs. I have them too. And knowing your signs actually gets you familiar with your non-negotiables because here is the trick. The trick is if you actually want to be in your sixth gear and more efficient and more productive and optimizing at the highest levels, you have non-negotiables, right? Yeah. Some people are fine on like, my, I'm married to someone who could literally never sleep and still get better grades than me. And I like want to kill him. But like yeah, me, the worst. if I don't sleep, Same. Nothing comes out of my mouth that makes any fucking sense. My memory yep. is not, my yep. cognition is just like six to 10 minutes behind on everything. Yeah. For a yep. very embarrassing public persona because you're just like, blah, yeah. blah, blah. what's the, the word I'm going for? It's, um, it's, um, and they're like, door? What are you looking for door? <laughs> <laughs> breakfast, Margo. It's called breakfast. Yeah. What's interesting too, and I, I spoke to my experience feeling like a little bit of shame. Being a hard worker was a big part of my identity for a long time yeah. because I'm, you know, raised Protestant. I got that Protestant work ethic. I got those boomer parents who just yeah. like instilled it in me. So I had a lot of unlearning to do around the fact that everything has to be hard. Everything does not have to be hard. Yes. And that's the reality. Like everything does not have to take all of it out of you. But sometimes when you are trying something new, when you're working to create something, when you are putting yourself out there more, there is that element of the sixth gear where it's like, okay, yeah. here comes the finish line. <laughs> so you have to yeah. get over the hump. And that's to the point you were saying. And I think when we have these like anti-movements where we have hustle culture and we have anti-hustle culture, the people in the middle are always going to be like, both of you are shaving me and you're both awful. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing anyway. Yes. So I think that what's really important for your own consideration is you know, is there a reality where you can work three hours a day and make a million dollars? Sure. Presumably. 
However, right now there's a lot of conversation in the space. Like that should be your priority. Get stuff off your plate, get stuff off your plate, hand everything off that you like hand everything off that you possibly can, even if you enjoy doing it because it's taking your time. I remember the first time like I had been taking in a lot of anti-hustle culture conversations and I was talking to a friend who was like, yeah, we're, you know, we're in launch and I've got sales calls booked and I had been reading about how like no one should ever do another sales call again. And like, if people want to work with you, they'll just do it. And they know you went up for your content and all these things. And she was like, yeah, I got sales calls booked. I like this part. You know, I like doing sales calls. I enjoy it as part of the launch process. And I was like, That's cool what? Like, you can say that now? Like, oh my God. And it was just so, I had almost forgotten for a second because there's such, I yeah. think, an eye in our industry, particularly, I think because there's so much overwork among women, there's the emotional labor, there's the invisible, what's the invisible workforce or whatever we call it, that is, is on women's shoulders as a woman. Um, so it's important for us to recognize that we don't have to be doing all the things all the time. I think that's vital. But as that conversation was kind of the only thing I was absorbing for a little while, I started to feel shame about the hard work that I needed to do to get things across the finish line that I had to push to make sure that my launches got filled, that I had to get on sales calls still and actually have conversations with people, which I enjoyed, but I didn't want to tell anybody that. It's such a fine line. And that's why I love that Sarah Peck brought up the sixth gear, because we all have that ability to go really hard and to bring it on home. We all have that ability inside of us. We would not be entrepreneurs if we didn't. It's a matter of using it wisely and also not always using it to 150,000%, right? I would say my hustle now, like my sixth gear now looks very different to my sixth gear then when I could spend weeks in that zone and I would be working till 10, 11 at night, every night for weeks at a time and just being like, this is what it takes. This is it. Also knowing knowing when you're spinning your wheels because I would have to that I was working really hard and I look back at it and I'm like 50% of that could have been eliminated. Yes. And I, did, I didn't know, like in yeah. the beginning, you don't know. So it's all part of, that's why it's called the yep. hustle. But I think once you know what the things are that are actually worth that time and investment in, yes. in year, one of the things that really disgusted me about agency life that I had to leave is that people would be like, oh, I worked all night. And it's been like, it was like this badge of pride. And I was like, yeah. dude, we were at drinks from four to nine. Yeah. You started at 10. That's yeah. why you were up till one. You, yeah. what? And so like, yeah. it drove me insane. And they were like, yeah, but that's part of the process. It was brainstorming. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not doing this with you. Like, yeah. no, no. And then you're going to go over turn around the next day and be like, oh my God, I'm having trouble with my gallbladder. And I wish I could get to the gym and I don't know how to make it happen. I'm like, yeah. I'm done with that. I'm yeah. done with that. That is not the same. So like the fact that you're like engaged in busyness is not the same as being in your sixth gear. Okay. Being oh, in your yes. sixth gear is when you are working, actually working and moving the needle. And sometimes we're not always clear on that, right? Like sometimes you're going to have to take sales calls that don't go anywhere, but take the freaking sales call, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, mm-hmm. So I, I think like being clear on what it means to work hard and what it means yeah. to create the illusion of working yeah. is really, really important. So like I got really good at the illusion of working. I was confused myself. Yeah. Like this wasn't something I did on purpose. It was just, I thought that I wasn't entitled to rest. And now I understand because I have achieved certain things that yes. if I don't rest in a way that is rest to me, by the way, might not look yeah. like rest to you. Yeah. It looks like rest to me. We all have our own different ways of decompressing. I can't write. I can't do my job. I can't teach. Yeah. So like, Here's what that looks like. Let me give an example. I think a better frame for this would be boundaries. So I was the person that thought like, you go to the conference, you meet everyone, you take everyone's number and then you like absolutely call everyone back and you become everyone's friend and you know all the people and you maximize. Yeah. (laughs) And I remember the first time I met someone, he was present when we were chatting and then he like tapped out at dinner. He was like, no, I'm not going to all. I have work to do. And I was like, I just felt the same as you. I was like, that's a, that's a thing that you, can you can do. do that? And let me yeah. tell you, I am religious about not socializing yeah. now when I'm speaking. If I'm yeah. speaking or if I'm presenting, you will not see me a happy hour. You will not see me schmoozing. Like that is not something that I can do because that takes away from the core of what I actually need to get done. You'll it's see me done. though. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an introvert, yeah. right? You're yeah, an exactly. So like it builds you yeah. up. My husband's the same way. Yeah. I can't do that. And I know that about myself. So now I know if I want to preserve the things that matter, part of my job yeah. is going to watch TV or going to rest or like doing something that is not my outside persona. That's so, so funny. Cause I actually have the opposite before speaking hilarious. and I have the opposite preparation process where I will go and like have a drink and see people and like get to know who's there. So I feel more comfortable on stage the next day. 
I will not be running my lines obsessively the night before. I'll get it when I like, oh, it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not, not saying that yeah. thing. I'm just like, this is yeah. something that some speakers do Yeah. Um, where you're just like running your lines and you're trying to rehearse and you're getting ready. If I'm going first, like the next day, like 8 a.m. or something, I'll of course go to sleep earlier and make sure I don't drink too much. But I think that I need that rest. Like that is yes. rest for me to be in a group of people and chatting and just like getting comfortable seeing friends and then going to bed. So it's so interesting. It really just depends on what your style. needs are and your work yeah. style and like what gives you energy. Because again, I think the introvert extrovert dichotomy, I think there's, because I think that sometimes I will also get tired in a crowd of people, but I think that it's just really important. And as you progress in your entrepreneurial journey, this is going to get clearer and clearer yeah. about what your sixth gear is, what's worthy of your sixth gear. And also when you need to rest. I worked intensive style with clients in one, three and five days for like a couple of years, miserable. Because what my brain needs is to sleep and to work on stuff in the very back. Yes. Like I, you will never get a draft for me or anything until I have slept. Because yes. I'm like, okay, we did the first draft. All right, now we'll have the second draft. Because if I sit there and work that draft yeah. until like for all hours just to get it in by deadline, it's not going to be good. And I'm going to hate it by the time yes. it gets to you. Yes. And though that was in my copy days. But I think, again, like understanding what your sixth gear is, how it works. Yeah. And also when to turn it off is one of the biggest gifts we can give ourselves Yes, and the experience of being business owners. I totally agree. And to that end, I think like knowing also just your prime work style yeah. on the flip side of the sixth gear, there's also, you know, as we're decompressing in order to get into that sixth gear, I remember when people used to make fun of me for not being like fun on the weekends. And I was like, so embarrassed by this, but I truly especially pre-kid, I loved spending like six or seven hours on a piece. That was fun for me. Like I wanted to do that. I liked returning emails. Like it didn't drain me. It actually got me excited yeah. before PM. I was like, all right, let's get drinks. That is how I liked to spend my time. And so I felt so much shame because people were like, why aren't you at brunch? I didn't want to say it publicly. I do now because I'll tell you what happened. I hate yeah. brunch. I hate brunch. I don't want to brunch point. duty. <laughs> because I've been up since seven anyway. So I'm yeah. hungry. So is it lunch? Like, is it, br I don't know. I don't know. It confuses me. It doesn't make any sense. And if I want to work out, it like messes up my eating schedule. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I really don't like brunch unless I'm hungover. Anyway, I said this publicly for the first time and I got flooded oh, with people God. coming out of the work or being like, I didn't like brunch either. I didn't know you can eat brunch. <laughs> And I was like, oh yeah. my God. And not to say the food, I like brunch food, but like, yeah. I don't want to eat at 11 because I want to do stuff with yeah. my day. Yeah, so, yeah, brunch always knocks me out. Day drinking, I'm napping. By yes, day. totally. I'm just, I'm just a sleepy person, man. I'm a Taurus, I'm an earth sign. I'm rounded in the earth and I need to take a nap. I think it's interesting and we got to give each other a lot of space, I think, to have our own processes too, because you can have good work-life balance and still just enjoy the act of working on the weekends. Yeah. Especially if you have a kid. Once you get into the anti-hustle culture rhetoric, it's really easy to be like, make your weekends sacred because that's, that's the policy for me. Like I refuse to work on weekends because I physically yeah. can't. I was helping on a shoot a couple weekends ago on a super early on a Saturday morning and I worked till about 3 p.m. I was dead for the entire yeah. rest of the week. The entire rest of the week was just shot because I didn't have two full days of rest. And I know yeah. that about myself. I was able to do it because I was like, okay, I don't normally work weekends, but this is a six gear moment. Let's do it. And then for the rest of the week, I was like, okay, we're pushing my launch a little bit. Like team, I need you to handle X, Y, Z. I'm going to stop with my morning writing practice this week. And I'm going to catch up on sleep. I love this so much because there's so much self-understanding yeah. and compassion while also being ambitious. Yeah. And so we don't want anyone to feel ashamed of their ambition. If you have things that you want to achieve, do not let anti-hustle culture get in your head. Like yeah. know yourself. Know yeah. when you need to rest, trust those signals, but also understand that a lot of these things you figure out as you go, like you develop yeah. boundaries by violating them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay. okay to be wrong too. I think I was really hard on myself for a long time because I was like, work, 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 hard worker, workhorse, part of my identity. And then when I started learning more about it and thinking more critically about it, I got really ashamed. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I'm such a fucking loser yeah. for like wow. wanting to work hard and for talking about it and for not always looking for ways to work smarter. And like, I was always just like white knuckling and doing the thing, but it wasn't wrong. Like it got me pretty damn good results in the moment. It's not the way I work anymore because I've learned, but I had to go through that. And I think, so if you're in that zone where you feel like you're hustling a lot and you want to get out of it, there are so many resources available to you. It's going to be a journey and that's okay. Either side of the spectrum. If you want to learn how to work a little harder, if you want to learn how to work a little less, it's all a process of testing and trying. So be with yourself. 
mm-hmm. be with yourself. And if you're like, yeah, I actually love working on weekends. And in a couple of years, you're going to be like, I can't believe I used to work on weekends. That's okay too. Yes. It's this evolution people, yes. all part of it. Yes. Let yourself change. I love that. I think that the more grace we can have with ourselves and yeah. how we change over time and just knowing who we are, what we want, how we work, how we optimize. And, and the bottom line here is people watch your health, your yeah. mental health, yeah. your physical health, because this stuff is not benign. Like if you are not okay, yeah. it affects everyone around you. It affects your staff. It affects your yeah. customers. It affects your family. It is yeah. not okay. Like you driving yourself into an ulcer is not good, but you also just sitting around and being like, why is it working? Like both extremes are dumb. Right? <laughs> so, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Both extremes are dumb. So listen, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what your sixth gear is. What does it feel like when you're sprinting? Mm-hmm. When have you been spinning your wheels and confused about what it means to actually work hard? Were yeah. you, or have you always been a white knuckler and did you change or are you still yeah. that way? And is it yeah. working? And what does yeah. working mean? There's yep. so many things about this discussion that I think are so personal to each one of us. So the advice that I really, really love. And I'll share here was stay in your lane, you know, like what someone else is doing and what's going to get them to the top of their mountain is none of your business, right? Mm -hmm. Like we each have different things that we care about and that we value. And so the more you recognize who you are and what you need to optimize your goals, the better, Yeah, better. So talk to us about them in the comments. I'm Margot Aaron. And I'm Hillary Weiss. If you like this episode, please like it below, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. We will see you in two weeks. Choo-choo.